Okay, today we're going to talk about how we factor an expression completely. And the use of the word completely here is going to turn out to be very critical. Um, so we've been working on factoring expressions for a while, um, and now the idea of factoring it completely is going to come into play. So this follows Chapter 11, Section 8 of the AMSCO textbook, um, and there's no new vocabulary today. All right, so the process that we're going to use to factor a... Uh, an expression completely is the first thing we're going to do is factor out a GCF. Okay, and then we're going to be left with two decisions. If we have a binomial left, we're going to look for the difference of squares. If they have a difference of squares, we can factor more. If not, then um, we can't factor anymore. Um, if you have a trinomial, look for if you have a trinomial, look for a binomial factors to factor more. So after you factor out the GCF and you're left with a trinomial, you're going to look for two binomial factors so that you can break it down even further. Okay, so we come to our first um, example here, and this was this was supposed to be um, sort of a schematic that will tell you where to go after. Yeah, it's like a decision-making schematic to tell you what to do after you arrived at something. So down here is our process. If we have a trinomial, look for binomial factors. Okay, so the first thing we do is always factor out the GCF. Okay, so, I'm, so for these two, the GCF is 2. So I'm left with a squared minus b squared. Okay, well a squared minus b squared is a binomial, and it is the difference of squares, so that can be reduced factored further into the sum and dif the product of the sum and difference of two terms. So we have two, and then we're going to break this down into two more factors here. Okay, so it would be a plus b times a minus b. Okay, so we learned that a couple of lessons ago, right? So if I just had a squared minus b squared, remember we take the square root of the first one, which is a, and we do plus the square root of the second one, which is b, and then we do the same terms, but we use subtraction. And then we multiply those out, that would have gotten you back a squared minus b squared, because the o and the i terms are additive inverses to each other. Okay, so the list of factors that make up 2a squared minus b squared are 2 times a plus b times a minus b. Okay, this is similar to taking something like, let's say, 20 and breaking it down into its prime factors. So, like, if I had 2 and 10 here, I'd have to break 10 down further into 5 and 2. So this is the list of all the factors. So I would say 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5. The same thing goes here. A 2 times a squared minus 2 times b squared, this is a list of all the factors. Here's the first factor. This is factor number 1. This is factor number 2. And this is factor number 3. So if I were to list all the factors, I would list 2, comma, a plus b, comma, and a minus b. Oops, this is factor number 3. Okay. All right, so moving on, we have a trinomial here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to factor out the GCF, which is... 3. Okay, I'm left with x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, and so in our schematic, we're in our decision-making schematic, it says if we're left with a trinomial, uh, we would look for binomial factors. So just looking at this part right here, can we break this down into binomial factors? Okay, the 3 would be carried down. The end, so let's look at the x factor here. We would put 2 up here and 1 here. So two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2 will be 1 and 1. So this trinomial can be broken down into two more factors. Okay, The trinomial is not a prime trinomial. It has two factors that go into it. Just like we have prime numbers, we have prime polynomials, um, where the x plus 1 is a prime polynomial because there's no other way to break it down. There's no other factor for x plus 1 other than x plus 1 and it. Uh, and 1. So the answer to this right here is um, that those three factors, right? So this original trinomial is equal to, I can break it down into three factors, 3, x plus 1, and x plus 1. Or, you know, I could even write that as 3 times x plus 1 squared. It's a more efficient notation. Okay, so for number 3, first thing I do is factor out my GCF, which is 2. So I have x squared minus um, 16. 
And then remember, if I'm left with a binomial, I always check to see if it's a difference of squares. Um, if it's not the difference of squares, I, I have to stop. But if it is, I can factor it into two more binomials. So I have the two there, but then this original binomial is going to factor into x um, minus 4 and x plus 4. Okay? And if I multiply those all back again, like if I took this just to check my work, and I multiplied them back again, probably the first thing I'd want to do is I'd want to multiply the binomials. Remember, with multiplication, it's commutative, so I can multiply in whatever order I wish. So multiplying these two binomials, I would get to x squared minus 16. And then if I brought down that 2, I'd distribute that in. I'd have 2x squared minus 32, which is the original trinomial. right? So if I checked my work, um, I would get the original trinomial, which means that this is correct. Okay, for number four, let's factor out the GCF, which is going to be two. So we'd have nine M squared minus four. Okay, and a lot of times the binomial you're left with is a difference of squares, which is the case here. This is a square number. This um, M squared has an even exponent, so this whole term is nine M squared is a square term. And 4 is also a square number, so we know that this is the difference of squares. So that's going to break down into 3m plus 2 and 3m minus 2. We'll bring down that 2. Okay, so all of those things are factors of 18m squared minus 8. Okay, uh, so I, I have my decision-making schematic down here to tell me what to do. Uh, first thing I do is I factor out a GCF, and again, you can see I'm left with this decision. It's a binomial, um, and it is a difference of squares, so we can break that down into x plus y oops, times x minus y, and we still have that a. Don't forget to bring down that a, because that's still a factor, okay? It's just like if I wrote down, if I was factoring, you know, 45, and I said, well, into primes, and I said, well, that's 5 times 9, but 9 is also can be broken down further. So that's really 5 times 3 times 3, right? I'm bringing down that 3 there, and I'm also bringing down that 5, so that when I have this list of factors, I should be able to multiply them back to get 45. When I have this list of factors, 9, x plus y, and x minus y, I should be able to multiply them back to the original um, Oh, that's not 9, that's A, I'm sorry. I should be able to multiply them back into the original uh, binomial. Okay, so for this next one, we have factor out the GCF. Oh, the GCF is X, right? So we have X squared plus 7X plus 10. Okay, I'm left with a trinomial. Let's see if they have any binomial factors. So I put 7 up here and 10 down here. And 5 and 2 would be two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 10. So this will be brought down into x plus 5 and x plus 2. And don't forget to carry down that x. Okay, so all three of these things, this whole list will, should be able to be multiplied back into that original trinomial. That's a 5 there. Okay. Um, so for this first one, uh, for number 7, there isn't a GCF here, or the GCF is 1. And I actually made a mistake. This should actually be a Y. So this should read Y to the 4th minus 13Y squared plus 36. Okay, so it, it's a, I, if I factored out the GCF, I'd just be factoring out 1. So in my decision-making schematic, I'm back at the decision to see if there's any binomial factors. Um, so here, let's put in 13, oh, negative 13 and 36, and that would be negative 9 and negative 4. But for this one, you have to be a little careful because you have y to the fourth here and a y to the squared term, not just a y to the squared and y. Okay, so what your binomial factors are going to be is y squared and y squared that minus 9 and minus 4 here, because if you multiply those together, you get y to the 4th 
multiply those together, you get minus 4y squared. Here would be the night negative y squared, and this would be the positive 36. Um, whoops, this would be y to the fourth, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm messing all this up. Okay, so let me just try this one more time. If I foiled this out, I should get back the original trinomial. So y squared times y squared is y to the fourth power. So that's my first term, y to the fourth power. Then my outer terms would be minus 4y squared, then minus negative y, 9y squared, and then the positive 36 here. So this would simplify into this uh, polynomial, in which was our original. Okay, so that is all to say that this right here is your answer. Okay, so taking all this out, this original thing equals um, these two binomials, y squared. Oh, actually, I always have to keep checking if I have a, um, any more to factor. And if you look at this, this is a common mistake that I just made. Those are actually differences of squares. Okay, so the y squared minus 9 can actually be factored into y plus 3 and y minus 3. And y squared minus 4 would be y minus 2 and y plus 2. So this original trinomial actually had four factors. Okay? That's the whole, that's where the, um, the idea of breaking it down completely comes in. I can never spell completely right, so you'll have to forgive me for not spelling it right. There. Okay. Bla breaking it down completely is what you really have to think about. So e at every step you have to say, well, if I have a binomial left, can I break it down any further? Always make sure because a common trick that people do is they make the binomials that are factored into something else that can be factored. Okay. Um, so now let's go to number eight. Okay, our common term is x. So we factor it out into x squared minus 4. Notice that this is the difference of squares, so this can be factored further into these two right there. Okay, so that's the answer right there. Um, you might want to pause the video so that you can try some of these on your own. Um, so for number 9, your GCF is x squared, so let's go ahead and factor that out. Okay, and this binomial you have left over is itself a difference of squares, so this could be factored into y minus, uh, sorry, 4 minus y and 4 plus y, and that x squared is going to be right there. Okay, and that's it. Break them down. Um, and we don't write that x squared as x times x. It's just a if the GCF has a squared term in it, we don't break that down into its factors. It's really only the, polynom or the binomial or trinomial we want to break up into factors. Okay, I can already see that there's a GCF for number 10 for as B, so let me factor that out. Okay, and that is a trinomial, so in order to figure out if they have factors, let's do uh, um, the modified x factor because that coefficient is 2. So we do 2 times 3 which is 6. I put that at the bottom. I do 7 here. So that should break up into um, 6 and 1. Okay, so let's break this middle term up into 6 and 1. So let's remember the b is there, but um, let's rewrite this trinomial as 6a plus 1a plus 3. Okay, then in our process here, remember we still have a B on the outside. <coughs> now let's break these down into two factors here, or into two binomials, and factor out your GCF here. So let's see. Our GCF of the first term would be uh, 2A, so we would have A plus 3 left over plus 1, and I'd have a plus 3 left over here. Okay, so I still have b, I'm still carrying that down there. And then I'd have 2a plus 1 times a plus 3. Okay, and I actually can get rid of the square brackets now, so it's b times 2a plus 1 
times a plus 3. Okay? And that is the end of the lesson.